new videos every day. How many diets have you tried and they've just failed? You either gain the weight back or you gain more weight back. How much money have you spent on dieting or followed a program and you had to spend a lot of money to be part of that program? How much stress have you had because you were following a dietary program and you had to count points or you had to keep up with a certain ratio or you had to log in or you had to do some work and effort towards maintaining this diet that you've subscribed to? My name is Ruth and I have a healthy desserts business called Treasured Earth Foods and today I'm going to give you a simple tool to help you understand the glycemic index and how that can help you to lose weight. The first thing I would like to explain is what exactly the glycemic index is. The glycemic index is the rate or the speed or how fast a, a food item will turn into sugar in the blood. Some have a really fast rate, immediately they turn to sugar like sodas, and then some have a much longer rate or they take much longer to turn to sugar in the blood and those would be say an apple. It has fiber in it and fructose and that is very different compared to what the sugars are in a soft drink. The reason the glycemic index is so important is because the rate at which sugar goes into the bloodstream affects the insulin levels. There is a video that explains this in more detail. It's called Blood Sugar, Hunger, and Mood, and it will explain in more detail how it is that insulin causes us to feel full immediately when we first eat, but then if the insulin levels are too high because we had too much sugar in the blood, then a very short time later, within a couple hours, we're going to feel hungry again even though we had a full meal or we felt that we had a full meal. And so the glycemic index is very important to, to be able to control how quickly we get the sugars into our blood. And really ideally we want a slower rate at which the sugar goes in so that we don't have such a huge spike in insulin and the the hunger pangs that we may have then take longer if we have a shorter spike in the insulin level. So the way this relates to weight loss is you're going to feel hungrier sooner so you're going to want to eat again. You're going to feel very tired and fatigued so your mood will actually be depressed and if your mood is depressed you're really not going to care too much about what you're eating you're just going to want to eat because that's what your body is telling you, is that you just need food in you and, and really it's less of an importance as to what you're eating and just satisfy that hunger pain that's there. So a lot of diets are gonna have you count carbs, which can be a lot of work and rather stressful. Rather than counting anything really, if your choices are, for a glycemic index standpoint, that you choose lower glycemic foods, so that would be your more complex carbohydrates, which are your fruits and vegetables, definitely, and then your whole grains, which uh, barley is actually one of the best low glycemic grains out there, as opposed to choosing high glycemic carbs, which would be sodas or most of your desserts, sugary desserts, sugary items, things that have a high glycemic index or quickly go into the bloodstream as sugar, if you just choose a lower glycemic food or carb, you actually eliminate most of the work and effort in weight loss because you're choosing a food that has a lot of nutrition in it, it fills you up, it keeps you full, you're not going to get the mood swings, you're not going to get the depression, you're not going to feel hungry within two hours of eating something, and you're not going to get the insulin spikes which lead to a whole host of problems, and so you'll actually start losing weight with far less effort because you're not really counting calories, you're not counting carbs, you're not restricting this or that out of your diet. You're just substituting a em an empty calorie food for a nutritionally dense calorie or nutritionally dense calorie food which has a lower glycemic index. Another thing to understand about high glycemic foods is as your sugar levels rise incredibly and they're spiked because of a high sugar content in the food, then you get a spike in insulin levels. Those insulin levels turn that 
extra sugar in your bloodstream into fat around the stomach area. So a high glycemic food is going to cause an increase in weight. And really, that's probably the easiest part to control is simply not having white bread, white rice, white refined flours, processed foods. Are, those foods are the ones that have the high glycemic index. So really, if you go more towards foods that are natural, less processed, your glycemic indexes should be lower. If you go to foods that are more processed, more refined, your glycemic index is going to be higher. A higher glycemic index is a higher insulin level, which means a higher fat level in your body. One of the popular diets out there is a diet that has high carbs and low fat, which for someone who's not very active or who may exercise once or maybe twice a week, that's actually going to cause you to gain weight because the excess sugar that a person takes in from a high carb diet gets turned to fat if it's not burned off. Someone who is more athletic would use up or burn up the sugars and the fats that the body has so those get processed through the body in the normal course of the body needing energy. But if you're not active at all, really a high carb diet and a, with a low fat food to go with it is actually causing weight gain rather than preventing weight gain. Because of that excess sugar that's going into the blood, causing the spike in the insulin, and then that extra sugar is converted into fat because the body has to store it somewhere. So really a high carb diet is not the best way to go if you don't have an active lifestyle. Someone who is a marathon runner actually will load up on a ton of carbs before their race because they need the energy generated from those excess carbs, but they of course will then burn it off. But someone who's not a high performance athlete can't really handle that kind of carb level in their diet. In future videos, I'll give you some practical weight loss tips and how to use the information that I've given you today to make weight loss an actuality with minimal effort and not a lot of stress. And you'll find that just by following some simple, not even rules, just simple guidelines that you will lose weight and you will find that it takes no effort on your part. So in future videos, I'll give you some practical guidelines and tips for weight loss. These aren't really rules, they're more just what you can do that's simple and easy to lose weight. I'll also give you some food recommendations that are quick to grab so that you reach for the right foods and those correct foods that you eat will help you to lose weight. In future videos, I'll also give you some tips on how to sneak very healthy, nutritious foods into the foods that you already eat so that you can have more nutrition in the same meal that you're already eating. Thanks for watching the video. Please visit my website at www.treasuredearthfoods.com. Also, please give my video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. And also, if you subscribe to the web channel, you'll be able to access future videos and learn more about Psyche Truth and health and nutrition.